right, welcome to our latest Swamp Cast. Uh, it's obviously Florida Vanderbilt week. It's weird, Robbie, that we're still in September. I know. It just feels like September's gone on forever after a quick summer. But and September feels like July, too. I know. Unbelievable. It's going to be warm out there. Um, but I was talking to Johnny Franks on my podcast, and he said, hey, that last week in, in Nashville when Flor- when uh, Alabama played Vanderbilt, that it was like 93 and, and yeah, humid, too. Yeah, it's not so cool anywhere right no, now. No real advantage there for Florida. Obviously, one of the keys, Robbie, is for them, for both teams, it's, it's you got to get up early. And it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world. We know it. We did, we did it last Saturday yeah. or Sunday morning. Got up at 5 a.m. to get a flight. So they're going to have to get up and get be ready. Um, talking to McElwain on the on the uh, teleconference, Robbie, and he, he made a good point. It's something I'm going to write about. You know, you don't have to wait till the fourth quarter. No, no. They need to go ahead and start playing when there's no sense of urgency. Maybe come out, get hot, get hot, start, start hot, and then not have to worry about coming – and winning the game in the last second like they've done the last two weeks. So. Yeah, and again, we don't know what the crowd's going to be like in terms of enthusiasm early because it's going to be It's usually hot. laid back, and it yeah. usually fills in as the first quarter winds down maybe. But. And it's going to be warm, and they're going to be – you can be here the fans, people fanning the, themselves. But, uh, look, this is going to be an interesting game to me, though, Robbie, just because of Luke Del Rio getting the start. We saw, in our opinion, the offense moved a lot better. Not everybody's opinion, I've yeah. found out. In of fact, I had, I had a guy who sent me an email. He said that Florida's that what people have pointed out is Florida scored too early in that game. That oh, was, gee, criticize him. There's for a that guy now. wide open out there, but we're gonna we're gonna wait. We're not gonna throw it to him. We're take gonna, a knee and then we'll do take it. Take a knee, yeah. But uh, that yeah, I can't. But you know, Pat, to me, watching the offense, there was a big change when he went in the game. They went up tempo. They got the, they got lined up in a hurry. They got a rhythm going, which we haven't seen all year. So I think he's the right guy for the job right now. The way that the state that this offense is in right now, they need a guy, a spark, and he gave it to him. Yes. It's up tempo. Call the right play. Go to the right guy. And I said this last week. I said, look, if if they want to win the East, he's the guy for he them. Is. But um, you know, if you're, if you're trying to develop a quarterback, you know, stick with Felipe. But. Yeah, Obviously, he, they've made the move. Yeah. Uh, Del Rio is not the quarterback of the future. No. He's a well, guy he's only that, this year. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a guy that can help you have a successful season right now because Franks isn't ready to do the things that Del Rio can do. And here's the thing that I think everybody, and, and again, this may not unfold the way we think it might, but here's what you have to understand is this, this week of putting in the playbook or putting in the game plan the playbook's more open. Oh, it definitely now, is, yeah. They went in with a game plan last year or last week but that was much more closed yeah. because Felipe didn't didn't get everything. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Del Rio, we've heard this for two years, that nobody knows the offense like this kid does. He, It's second nature for him to find the right guy and do it quickly, yeah. and that's what we didn't have before. Franks was kind of hesitating. If he had to go through progressions, it was like a little too slow, and then the, the play right. is gone. And and just everything seemed a little bit yeah. slower. And that's look. None of this is a knock on Felipe Franks. No, he's a kid who didn't have a quarterback coach in high school. Was just one of those big, strong guys that was bigger and stronger and faster, and everybody could run, and could uh, throw the ball a mile. And he's being coached up, and it's not doesn't always happen. I I, I bring up we brought up Danny Warfel last last uh, songcast, Robbie, about how his first year was up and down. Yeah, it know? really was. And I'm, it, he just needs to play. That's all there is to yeah. it. I mean, you got you can coach him, but they need, the more he plays, the better he'll get, the more comfortable he'll be. And again, we'll never know what that loss in Northern Colorado game meant for his development. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, but hey, we, there's nothing you can talk about with that. Uh, this is where they are. They're sitting here at 2-1, and 2-0 and in the SEC, and one of only three Power 5 schools to be 2-0 and in their conference for what that's worth. Probably not worth a whole lot. Better than being one and one. Better than being one and one, and uh, obviously we'll see how the offense plays. Now, it, look, they—it's pretty. We talked about their identity. It fe- feels like they finally maybe have an identity, and a lot of that identity are the two freshmen. Yeah, no doubt about it, Pat. Those guys have given them playmaking ability. They're making plays. Maybe when there isn't a whole lot there, they're making something happen. That's what's been missing here. And then your line plays better, looks better when you got a guy behind him to make a play. So we've seen that with Davis and yeah. then Tony both. And again, with Malik Davis, it's not like they're going to kick uh, LaMichael P. Ryan or um, Mark Thompson to the curb. No, I mean, they're all going to play. They're, yeah, they're all going to play. And, and look, I thought P. Ryan and Thompson played pretty well last week. Yeah. So it wasn't that they were bad, but Malik Davis was different. He yeah. Was, he's a guy that gets three when you when there's a hole for two. Yeah. And he's also a guy that you kind of block harder for him because you think if I hold this block for yeah. another half second, he's going to make something big happen. And even the wide receivers blocked great in that game and helped those plays happen. So They did. 
However, what it wasn't great was punt coverage, and no. it's got to get better. <laughs> he's I, I, kicking the ball too far, which is hard. Well, that's a hard criticism to make of a punter. But but he's kicking it too far, but it's because nobody's running down there yeah. fast. And, you know, he kicked it the same length last year. Chris Thompson was always running down yeah. there smacking They miss guys. him. But then, like Max said, too, he needs more hang time on those long He does, seasons. but they've got to get find out their gunners. Now, they, according to McElwain, they spent the last – three days in practice figuring out who their gunners should be rather than just assuming the fast guys should be yeah. there. But when you have a punt and the, and here's this booming punt, and you look down, and there's just the long snappers. The only one yeah, the I field. mean, there's a guy catching the ball. There's nobody near him for 10 yards. So. You knew that wasn't going to end well. No. And it did not. It ended up with a 50-yard return. So uh, so we'll see. We'll see what they get. I, again, Florida's struggle with Vanderbilt the last two years, you know, Mac was talking about Ralph Webb giving them fits. Well, he's really off to a slow start this year. His longest run all year is nine yards. Yeah, but apparently a lot of inexperience up front. He's yeah. not getting a lot of a lot of holes to go through. But and yeah, he's, he's going to play his butt off here. Yeah, he is. But he's a guy who needs holes. Yeah, I mean, he he's does. not a guy who's going to going to create or uh, break a lot of tackles. He needs a little hole, and then he's pretty quick to get through. He's a good player. Yeah, really. No good. question about it. He'll end up like I think he's going to be in the top ten in SEC when he's done in all time rushing. Um, so we'll see uh, how Florida defenses plays defense against him. Uh, they play defense against Kyle Shermer, who's a solid quarterback. So yeah, they've got some balance, potential yeah. balance on that team. Yeah, but again, if, if start fast, don't wait till the fourth quarter. Uh, I, I like Florida in this game, but um, it, it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, they're, they're, like I said back when they lost to Michigan and the game got uh, hurricane out, there was only one sure thing win to me on the roster, on the on the rest of the schedule, and that was UAB and maybe now Missouri. Yeah. But other than that, there's no guarantees. No, they're all tough games. But, Pat, I think you you mentioned the fast start. If they can do that, I think you get a lot of confidence going yeah. and you relax and have a good time and you get better on offense and you have something to build on for the next game. Not only that, but you wonder where Vandy will be. If yeah. you get off to a good start yeah, after and they just week. lost 59 to nothing, yeah. you go, Things here start. we go again. Yeah. Especially the younger players on that team. Uh, I talked to Derek Mason on the conference call about that uh, Wednesday, Robbie, and he said, look, he said, I, I, I know my veterans get it, that there's adversity during the season and things snowball sometimes, but I don't know if my younger players do. So i got yeah. to make sure they get that. Yeah, they haven't been through that before, so it's a new, something new to them. You can read about that and more, and the games will sign on Saturday. Until our next podcast, which, of course, will be actually a Facebook Live after the game. Hope you guys have enjoyed that. We've enjoyed doing them. We'll be doing that um, from Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Probably around 5 o'clock, would you say? Hopefully, yeah. Two thirty, three thirty, Somewhere in there. Maybe 5.30, 5.30-ish. Uh, but we appreciate you guys for clicking on. Until then, Pat Dooley and Robbie Andrew, the Gainesville Sun, saying so long from the Sunshine State.